This is Twit. There are a couple of interesting notes about how WannaCry was portrayed at the time of its initial outbreak. For example, and our listeners will remember, despite the suggestions that it was unpatched Windows XP computers primarily responsible for WannaCry's rapid spread, this mistake was due to the fact that some of the more high-profile attacks were XP-based, more than 97% of WannaCry detections at the time were actually coming from the newer Windows 7 operating system. It's also worth noting that while a computer patched against the Eternal Blue exploit is no longer vulnerable to being infected by a remote connection from another WannaCry infected computer. In, in other words, that was the way things were getting in was over the, the SMB, you know, file and printer sharing connection and port. If that computer, the, the patched computer, was infected before it was patched, it will still be trying to infect other computers. The anti-eternal blue patch only prevents the vulnerability from being exploited, not from exploiting others. And if nobody had since updated, if nobody had since updated WannaCry, that is, if it was the original WannaCry, that file that started spreading on May 12th of 2017 would be the same as the file seen in the wild today. But it turns out the reality is very different and much more intriguing. There's a new WannaCry. Sophos's research is based on a signature named CXMAL slash WANA hyphen A, which is the detection name that identifies when a computer suddenly finds the WannaCry payload, which was a file named MSSECSVC.exe, so Microsoft Security Service msseccsvc.exe plopped into the c colon backslash windows directory on a sophos protected machine the client application immediately meaning the, the client av immediately blocks and removes any such file this using this detection data sophos has been able to see how many computers are being attacked repeatedly by other computers that is causing new instances of that file to be dropped into the windows directory as well as the file dropped during the attack these infected machines could be on the same network as the ones being attacked or possibly anywhere in the world all we really know about the infected machines that attempt to spread the infection is that they don't have a working AV on them. Because certainly by now, all AV has been updated to detect WannaCry. Otherwise, they would have stopped WannaCry and would not be attempting to infect other machines. In the three-month period from October 1st, 2018 through December 31st, 2018, so right, the last, the last quarter of last year, Sophos logged, get this, 5,140,172 detections <laughs> of CXMAL hyphen WANA A, nearly two years after the original attack, as nearly every machine that can install the eternal blue patch has already done so, why are there so many detections? Yeah, good question. As a sanity check, since the data was nearly a year old, Sophos just in August, two months ago, reran their queries looking at just one month of attack data, August 2019. They discovered that in that month alone, they had recorded more than 4.3 million attacks against 
their customers' machines. That seems like a significant increase, but those numbers can be misleading because the data is based on customer machine feedback and the number of customer reports changes over time as the size of their customer base changes, presumably increasing as they're growing. So that can make the problem seem like it's getting worse when in fact it is uniform. Uh, what was important to note is that the proportion of the total number of attacks targeting Sophos customers in specific countries remain consistent in the data from 2018 and now this recent data in 2019 with the machines in the U.S. topping the list of countries most subjected to failed attempts at WannaCry infections. The fact that WannaCry is still going at all raises some interesting questions. Are all these machines really still not patched? Why is the kill switch not preventing the infected computers from, from trying to attack others, as indeed they are? Why is no one complaining about files being encrypted? So Sophus knew the answer to the first question already. That is, are all these machines really still not patched? This CX Mal Wana A detection is only possible on unpatched machines. To be sure of this, they investigated a random selection of computers to manually verify that they had indeed not been patched against Eternal Blue or anything else in the last two years. And that is the case. <laughs> the, even though Sophos's AV is on those machines, they are never being updated for more than two years. To answer question two, why is the kill switch not preventing the infected computers from trying to attack others? Because that's what it's designed to do. They know the computers reporting the detections have internet access because that's how they obtain their data. Since those machines are most likely being attacked by infected computers on the same network, it seems likely that those attacking machines would also have internet access. So why isn't the kill switch stopping them? Analyzing those 5.1 million detections over last year's three-month period from October 1st through December 31st, they discovered something unexpected. The malicious file being dropped on these computers was not the original WannaCry MSSECSVC.exe file. In fact, among the 5.1 million detections, they identified... <laughs> 12,481 unique files. The original true WannaCry file was only seen 40, 40 times, a number so low that it could easily be attributed to testing rather than real attack. 12,005 of the unique files identified were seen fewer than 100 times each. So also rare, 476 of the unique files accounted for an overwhelming 98.8, almost 99% of the detections with 10 of those files accounting for 3.4 million of the detections and the top three accounting for 2.6 million. So they analyzed those top 10 most prevalent files and quickly saw that they had all been altered from the initial released WannaCry code. The alterations in all 10 samples bypass the kill switch entirely. This means that those, that these 10 up, updated WannaCry variants Ability to spread is no longer restrained by the kill switch. So they, they examined all of the files they had discovered um, 
and found four different techniques which have been used to render the kill switch ineffective. They found one, simply removing or changing the kill switch URL in roughly half the samples, they simply removed the URL completely. The next most common approach was to change the last two letters from EA to FF. So modifying the kill switch domain resulted in these variants of WannaCry again being unable to obtain a DNS resolution, freeing them to attack. The second method was to change the code to instruct the malware, regardless of the result of the kill switch test, move to the next command. In other words, just change, the, the you know, tweak the code, a byte or two of the code. They also found um, uh, an instance where the kill switch was no opt. The actual opt codes were just changed to do nothing codes, so it didn't even bother doing the test. And the fourth method was a two-byte jump instruction to jump over the code that checks the result of the of the kill switch connection, also resulting in it in just a simple continuation of the attack. What's really interesting is that all four of these techniques were implemented with hex editors, hex editing the original WannaCry malware executable binary file, not by recompiling from the original source code. Since anyone who obtains a copy of the executable binary file is able to hex edit it, this suggests that many miscreants around the world, were, were four or five, were attempting to immediately two days after Marcus stopped it, because that's how old these are, to, to immediately untether and unleash the original WannaCry malware worm upon a still unsuspecting world. We know that the original WannaCry kill switch is still crucially important because in a recent interview of Jamie Hawkins, who actually was working with Marcus on that fateful domain registering day, Jamie indicated that in June, just a few months ago, of 2019 alone, the kill switch is known to have prevented about 60, 60, 60 million ransomware events. In other words, today, if that domain were not still registered, 60 million systems would be encrypted by WannaCry, a, a, a virulent strain that is, that is still potent and still trying to do this. It's performing those DNS lookups. The answer comes back, yeah, we got an IP, and it, no, it, it uh, just shuts it down. If that, if that domain name were not still registered in one month, 60 million systems, well, or 60 million instances, we don't know how many times each system is doing a DNS query. So it's not 60 million systems. It's, it's 60 million queries, certainly a bunch of systems. That indicates that there are still potentially at least thousands of computers infected with the original WannaCry, uh, and keeping that kill switch domain online is the only thing preventing a second outbreak. Okay, so if all of those manually edited with a hex editor copies of WannaCry have been unleashed by the hex editing, why hasn't a second massive wave broken out? To answer that question, Sophos executed a random, ex, actually ran, they executed a random selection of samples, including the top 10 that were most prevalent on unprotected computers. In each case, no files were encrypted and no ransom notes were created. Turns out 
there's one component that spreads the malware to other machines, and then there is a separate component that does the encryption. This second component is contained within a password-protected zip archive. The contents of the zip archive are extracted to the computer and then used to execute the ransomware phase of the attack. In all 2,725 samples, that zip archive was corrupted. Errors during extraction appeared after only a few of the archive files had been extracted from the contents and the extraction stopped. That was the discovery they were seeking, which made everything else make sense. The large volume of detections were due to the lack of a kill switch, but nobody was complaining about in their files being encrypted because in every single sample seen in the wild, the archive was corrupt and would not decompress, so the system would not decrypt anything. There but for the grace of God. <laughs> Sophos researchers were not the only ones to spot this. Back in May of this year, uh, Kevin Beaumont tweeted, and I have his tweet in the show notes, tweeting, he, he tweets, as we've, we've, we've often talked about Kevin's work, he's a well-known security researcher, he tweets as Gossy the Dog. He said, probably the most interesting WannaCry thing now is it is still spreading. In fact, there's more spreading than when it began. Why don't we hear about it? Somebody broke the ransomware portion of the variants going around, almost all of them, like 99% plus, don't unpack. So as it turns out, this broken payload that appeared almost immediately following the original infection was, was inadvertently duplicated and promulgated by the bad guys. On May 14th, two days after the May 12th original WannaCry event, Researchers at Kaspersky discovered a variant of WannaCry that had been uploaded to VirusTotal earlier that day. They shared the sample with researcher Matt Succi, and in a blog post that same day, he confirmed that the sample did not have a kill switch and that the archive was corrupt. So that appeared two days after the original infection. It was also noted that while the sample had been uploaded to VirusTotal, it had not been seen in the wild. This sample led to Sophos's final discovery. The MD5 hash of the file uploaded to VirusTotal, which doesn't have a kill switch and doesn't encrypt files, is none other than the exact same file they now see causing the highest number of WannaCry detections. It is the... It is number one on the unique file variance list shown earlier, causing 29% of all WannaCry detections in their data. Even more amazing is that the top three files on their list are all variants of this same file. So the bad guys copied the bad one and put it out there. The other two files contain the same correct, corrupt, corrupt archive, the only difference is in how the kill switch has been removed. And we talked about those variants. In other words, it's really sort of a true miracle that a subtle mistake made just days after the first WannaCry wave, pre wave prevented another utterly unrestrained and unrestrainable devastation that would have occurred with WannaCry's immediate return.